Good morning and a warm welcome to the Simply Divine program. I'm Maria Colfer and you're tuned to Southeast Radio. Well, a very special and happy St. Patrick's Day to you, and I hope you enjoy the parades and festivities and take pride in our National Saints Day. If you're in Dublin last Saturday, one would have had to have had great pride in walking with the 100,000 people who wove a long, long line down O'Connell Street to Merrion Square for the pro-life march. And I just want to say well done to all those organisers of buses and to those who took the time and effort to be there. But back to today, what have we for you? Have you ever wanted to be able to sing, say, just have a party piece when the occasion arises, or sing with a choir? Well, fear not, we may just be able to help you. With me in the studio this morning is a lady who lives in Balamitty. She has qualifications that include a BA degree in Psychological Studies from UCD, a diploma in Public Relations, a diploma in Holistic Dietetics and Nutrition, a Level C Certificate in Training and Development, and Colour Me Beautiful Image Consultant Certificates in Colour Analysis, Style and Advanced Makeup. She likes to perform, to play the guitar and to compose her own music. She's Aideen Neoriada. Good morning, Aideen, and thank you for coming in. Good morning, Maria. It's a pleasure. Your name, Neoriada, it's a name we associate with music, but have you important family connections? Um, not to the the famous Sean O'Riada, <laughs> unfortunately. But my father's name is Sean, but he goes by Sean Reedy. And for a long time, I went by Aideen Reedy. And about three or four years ago, um, I wanted to, I was living in London and I was coming back to Ireland and I wanted to reconnect with my Irishness. So it's appropriate to talk about that on St. Patrick's Day, I think. <laughs> and Nereida, as you might know, means daughter of Reedy. And um, I just thought the meaning of it was beautiful. My mother is actually from the U USA. So I had very strong connections to my mother's family and I felt I didn't have a, as, as strong a connection with my father's. And that was why I started using Ní Ríada. Well, well done. You wanted to do something around music, but your father wasn't that impressed. So you had to do a bit of vid detour. Tell us a little bit about it. <laughs> That's right. And uh, fathers are always so concerned that you're going to have a career path. And unfortunately, he didn't see a career path for me in music when I was younger or performance, really, because what I wanted to do was acting. So I went and did psychological studies. I loved it. And I did languages and I traveled with my languages and I worked um, for an international airline actually in um, using my languages as well for a number of years. But it as just an air hostess, air hostess. Yes, I was with Japan Airlines and a lot of Irish girls actually were uh, with them for a while. I was based out of London. And, and what about speaking Japanese? I did. Yeah, well done. Yeah, <laughs> no, we would have done what I call in cabin Japanese. So I could um, make sure that you had your seatbelt, shita buruto, or hajimashite, or whatever it was, and koryoire, uh, tashimashoka, would you like ice in that? <laughs> but if you put me into a train station in Japan, I mightn't have been able to find my way back out again without a little bit of help. Well, self confidence is a big issue for many people. Why do you think that is? I really feel it comes from our childhood and things like not being encouraged to do something you'd like to do when you're younger. For instance, when I wanted to do certain things with my career, um, that those small things really do affect our confidence. And people make comments a lot of the time, maybe, you know, with good intentions. They might think, oh, don't don't try and sing, you know, you're not very good. And unfortunately, if you're sensitive, or if the person says it to you at a particular moment when you you really want to know, can you, and you really trust them, you'll believe that. And from there on in, your confidence in that area could be low because not not everybody is is um, has low confidence in every area. Someone might be very confident in one area and very lacking confidence in another area. Well. Is self-confidence something we're born with or do we just develop it more? You know, do some people develop it more or is it acquired? I do think some people have a personality with a bit of a bit of spark or confidence in it. And, um, and some people are a bit more reserved. But confidence doesn't necessarily mean you're the loudest person in the room. You could be very confident, but be the quietest person in the room, but very self-assured. 
in yourself and know yourself quite well. It is something you can develop, though. And I think a lot of young people can have their confidence dashed um, because they're not successful at things they wish they were or they don't get encouraged. But if you um, if someone uh, puts their mind to things and completes things, whether it's completing a book or a course or um, any endeavor, those um, small things can actually build your confidence over time. So you you take on um, a challenge and you work at it and complete it to the best of your ability and that will build your confidence over time. And as children, we're doing that always. We're always trying things we can't do. You know, when you start off in third class, you're not expected to know all the material until you finish third class and you don't get to do third class again. (laughs) You have to start fourth class and then it's harder again. So when we're younger, we know that we, we shouldn't know it straight away. But as adults, we think... I should be good at that already or I've done a few weeks of that now. Why am I no good? Um, And things do sometimes take more time than we realise. So the important thing would be to give it the time and to complete it. Yes. Yeah. Complete what you can and start with tasks that are genuinely doable for you. Um, I I feel if you've like, for instance, I work with people around singing and um, if somebody comes to me and they can't hold a note, there's no point in trying to get get them to sing a a full song because they won't be ready for that. They need to start, you know, learning very, you know, how to match a sound. Funny noises are a great starting point for somebody who doesn't really have a good voice yet. And I think you just have to start small. Well, now, you did the Camino a few years ago. It was a kind of a life changing experience for you. Yeah. And to be honest, that's one of the reasons What I learned on the Camino has really stood to me in in helping myself and in helping others. The whole concept of just putting one foot in front of the other and that you will get somewhere is just was a revelation to me. I've always was thinking about my goal. What's at the end? And I wasn't taking enough time to savour the journey and the Camino um, the week that I did of it. I did it with Fern's Diocese, actually, um, a number of years ago. And just the journey, taking one foot in front of the other and being contented that you've completed a step. And that gives you um, satisfaction rather than thinking I have to get to the very end in order to be satisfied. And of course, the Camino is done in stages usually, isn't yes. it? So you don't set out on day one to, to arrive at the end. No, it's, it's a no. Process. And I haven't <laughs> gotten to the end yet of the Camino, <laughs> but I'm happy that I've done my one stage. OK. Well, you train people to have confidence singing. Well, Aideen, can everyone sing? I mean, have we all got a capacity to become Maria Callas with the right training? I don't train people to become a Maria Callas. <laughs> um, I think people need, uh, can, everyone can enjoy sound and singing to, the, to a certain degree. And it depends on the choice of song and the level that you're at, what you're capable of today. But I love the idea that anybody can find a party piece that will suit them and they will find an audience, whether it's the audience you wished it was, like the National Concert Hall or an audience in the Wexford Arts Centre or perhaps a local pub, there's an audience for everyone. So it's about finding the right song, the right um, tutor and there you can go from there. Most people would like to be able to do a party piece when socialising. Is that the kind of client you would welcome? Yes, that's exactly my kind of client. And the, per- the people who have wished they could sing, they've been told they can't often and they wish they could. And what I would love for them to realise is that it is possible. It can take a little bit of time, but it is well worth it. And um, that's really the type of client I specialise in. With music or singing, do we exercise a different side of our brain, do you think? 100% you're on the money there, Maria. And I love that aspect of it because I studied psychology, as you know, in UCD. Um, We don't um, dance in the same way as we walk. And it's the same with singing. We can't sing in the same way as we talk. When we dance, we have to let go. We have to let go of our logical side of our minds. We have to become more in tune with feeling. And it's the very same for singing, because especially for singing in comparison to many instruments, when we sing, we don't see the instrument. We're not pressing a button and playing a note. We have to guess where that note is when we open our mouth 
And if you've sing, sung quite a lot, you're good at guessing. If you haven't sung a lot, you're not good at guessing yet. So it's about feeling and it's about letting go. It's about relaxing. It's about your creativity. And I would feel it's about tuning into your inner child a little bit as well. Well, I said at the beginning um, that you like to, to perform. So maybe at this stage, you'd like to introduce one of your own pieces that you brought with you. Yes, thank you. Well, for a long time, I didn't believe I would be able to do anything with my singing. I had lost my own faith in myself. And um, it was only through my students and the fulfillment of that, that I've had through teaching that I have um, started to write my own music. In fact, my students would come to me and they would be writing their own music. And I felt like I had to try to keep up with them. So this song was written with um, a fantastic guitar, guitar player and composer called um, Mick Egan. And he and I wrote this together and a friend of mine who is a music producer did the production, which adds an extra element of specialness to it. It's called Honey. Sweetness for yourself 
that was Aideen singing her own composition there, Honey. I should say that um, Aideen is daughter of Sean Reedy, the man we associate with that great famine ship, the Dunbrody in Euros. What was that like for the family, him working there? Well, it's like a family endeavour now. It was actually, both my brothers still work there, though my father has retired since. And I remember when my dad got started to get involved, I was in my late teens and he came to the family and said, this is what I'd like to do. But it means leaving my steady job and going um, and doing a contract for a year. Is everyone OK with that? And I th- don't think we even realised what the, you know, the implications. Yeah. yeah, we didn't. We just said, Daddy, go for it. <laughs> and uh, we're very glad he did now because it's been um, so inspiring to watch him over the years and um, the struggles and the um, the ups and downs and the successes have been phenomenal. Yes, yeah. it's it's a wonderful um, presence there in, in Euros. As I heard uh, somebody describe it one time. If you came into Euros and there was no Don Brody, it would be like going to Rome and the Pope was away. <laughs> <laughs> well, Aideen, to come back to the singing, are there things one shouldn't do if you want to sing? I mean, like are there techniques you should use? Are there foods that nourish your voice? I mean, I presume smoking is not good for your voice. No, it, it, it definitely isn't great for the voice. It'll limit your range. But we all have a range of notes that we can sing. And we and that's peculiar to each individual, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but it's it, especially if you don't sing much, your range is quite small because your speaking voice then is your main range. So as you can hear, when I speak, my voice goes up and it goes down. So I use my range a lot when I speak. Some people don't. Some people speak at the same level all the time. Very monotone. Yes. So whatever notes you're used to using in your sing- speaking voice will be the ones you'll have easy access to when you're singing. And then if you practice other exercises and things, you will access more notes. So one of the one of the things I do recommend for listeners, if they do want to learn to be able to sing, is a funny exercise that sounds like you're a car speeding up on a road and you just go. As from a low note, your easy low note to high note. And you just practice that and that it is actually touching up all the little notes all the way up in your range. And if you practice something like that from high to low and low to high, it really is a lovely warm up for the voice. That's very easy to remember and very easy to do. And what about foods? Certain does it foods, matter? Yes, um, it does a little bit. Um, things like spicy foods can affect your voice, um, but it mightn't affect one person as much as another. I'd notice now if I ran around outside or if I was rushing around on a particular day, it would affect my voice. But I think one thing you need to remember as well is that emotions very much affect your voice. So if you've had a little of an argument or you're a bit upset about something, you'll find it quite hard to sing. And that can catch people out if they decide, oh, I'll sing a party piece. And when I sing it at home, it sounds fine. But then when they get nervous in front of a few people, the nerves actually do affect the emotion of the nerves affects your voice. Is there a common mistake that non-singers all make that could be rectified? Mm, Yes, this is a simple thing, but I think it's very important. A lot of non-singers will sing along to things, but they don't actually know where the notes are. They never um, took enough time with the song. Learning a song is a bit like learning a poem. You have to actually look at it, reread it, maybe write it out, learn it. The ones that we learn as kids or as children, we tend to know them off by heart, you know, because we, we've sung them so many millions of times. Um, but the notes that you're going to try to sing need to be correct to be able to sound like you're a good singer. So a non-singer might not realise they're, they're singing incorrect notes and it will really help you if you take a small part of it and listen to it over and over again. And like even as one line, listen to it a few times, then try and sing along a few times. And then try to sing it on your own a few times because you'll notice when you're not getting it right if you listen to yourself. But if you're singing along to a lovely, you know, loud song, you actually aren't listening to yourself and you may not be singing the notes correctly. What was the most rewarding client you have encountered now? Oh, I've had so many. Um, One of my most entertaining and and rewarding clients is a gentleman called Brendan uh, Kehoe, um, who 
who came to his first class and said, I've been singing for 50 years to myself. <laughs> and uh, he had been taking anti-anxiety medication to be able to stand up and sing. And uh, um, he was able to give that up within a few weeks of starting classes with me. So that was a lovely transformation. He always had a good voice, so he didn't have that struggle. Sometimes people come to me and they don't have a voice at all. So he luckily had a voice, but his nerves were catching him out and he wasn't able to enjoy his singing at all. So it was transformative. Yes. You're studying again at the moment, are you? Yes, I am. I have. Um, I had done two years of a BA in jazz music um, and I hadn't finished it. So I'm doing a diploma at the moment in um, popular vocal music teaching. So it's not classical um, and it's for people who want to be able to learn basically pop songs or popular songs. So I can help anybody who, you know, it's a, a different type of level and it's different focus. And um, I really enjoy helping people get a party piece ready. So it's very appropriate for the work that I'm doing. And how, how many lessons would it take someone to go to to get a party piece that it would be OK in public? It really depends on the person. Um, we have to spend a bit of time on a song ourselves. So you could come for four lessons and if you've spent every day doing a little bit, you'll fly after four. Um, if you don't have enough time to do anything in between, you might take a little bit longer. And there are people who come to me that really will struggle a lot at the beginning to hold a, a tune um, and it can take them a little bit longer. I normally recommend people do um, six to ten lessons at the beginning. And do an introduction lesson. I do a one off introduction that gives you an idea of whether you enjoy working with me and, you know, is it something that you're, you know, that you're willing to invest in. Is it difficult to find a genre that you want to specialise in? I found it difficult myself because I, I did enjoy singing jazz um, for quite a long time. Um, really, I think the most important thing, rather than looking at a genre, is to look at the meaning behind a certain song. Because f for you to pick your party piece, Maria, I'd be asking, what song plucks on your own heartstrings? What song means something to you? What do you, you know, have a song that is, you associate with a particular family member or a particular time in your life that would that you'd be able to sing with um, your own meaning to it, something unique to you, your own version of it. And that's the song that I think other people that you're friendly with or at a party would enjoy listening to the most. You're turning more to writing your own pieces. Does spirituality inspire you or influence your creative side? Definitely. I definitely feel it's a gift to be able to create and creativity comes. It, it's a divine thing. Um, I, I feel when I started my teaching that it was a divine inspiration that led me to do that because part of me didn't want to teach at all. Um, so I feel very lucky and I am very grateful to all of the, the help that I'm getting from above. Well, Aideen, we're out of time. We hope you continue to bring confidence to all who want to sing but never had the courage to. And may you continue to bring pleasure to your audiences and may inspiration in your composing come easily to you. Good morning to you. That's all from us for this week. My thanks to Father Dermot on the sound desk. And remember, we're all made in the image and likeness of God. So we're not just human, we're also divine. And taking us out, we have another piece by Aideen. And it is... A Kiss. can melt a heart in a moment from ice into steam instantly trust is the
This program was produced by the Christian Media.